As an investment, it's good because the ETF is an investment vehicle. Yep. It is not a technology vehicle. So yep. we still haven't won that battle. We've won the battle to say this is an investable asset class and it's a very exciting one because as a technology, it's growing fast and the adoption of it's growing fast. Welcome back to Crypto Insights. In his latest interview on CoinX, Raul Pal discusses the significance of the Bitcoin exchange traded fund as an investment vehicle, highlighting that it marks the acceptance of crypto as an investable asset class. He emphasizes the growing adoption of crypto and its potential for high returns. He advises investors to be patient, practice risk management, and focus on understanding the crypto space. Pal sees the ETF as a bridge between traditional finance and crypto, allowing older investors to gain exposure to the asset class. He believes this influx of capital will accelerate the development of the crypto space. Pal touches on the global nature of cryptocurrencies, emphasizing their accessibility and fractionalization, enabling people from different income levels to participate equally. Discussing the impact of crypto on the traditional financial system, Pal acknowledges that the USA initially resisted, potentially slowing down the industry's growth. However, he sees the ETF as a pivotal development that provides access to crypto for a broader investor base. Pal emphasizes the importance of education for investors, advocating for an understanding of the space, investment strategies, and the real opportunities in crypto. He underscores the value of long-term buy-and-hold strategies, suggesting that most successful crypto investors follow this approach. We will bring you the highlights of this interview, so please don't forget to subscribe and liking the video. Trying to explain to people how to navigate the crypto space, which is like, don't FOMO, don't use leverage, yep. be patient, buy and hold, store your assets carefully, and just pick the larger tokens and just let it ride. If you want to speculate, do it with about 10% of what you're doing, and the rest just hold. There's this new financial system that was being built and the old system which was broken and they were going to meet at some point. And I think that actually really met in 2020 when a lot of people suddenly understood it. But this is the merging of these two worlds. Yeah. Right. This is TradFi saying, I get it now. You guys are onto something bigger here. Now, it's not perfect because it's not self-custody. <coughs> self it's not the ethos, but it's giving people exposure to an asset and what's really powerful, why I really care about crypto is it is the same asset in Delhi as it is in Lagos, as it is in London. The same asset. And it's fractionalized. So each one of us can put 10% of our paycheck in, regardless of how much or little you earn. So now everybody can participate in something on an equal playing field. It's huge. For the ETF, it's like you had to own, open a Coinbase wallet. There was, you know, the US were kind of clamping down on other exchanges, finding them, making it really difficult for investors who didn't do the homework, who didn't have an element of, I understand the risks here, I know what I'm trying to do. Um, those people were shut out. So that's really, if we think about the crypto ownership, it's actually quite young. It's a young demographic. Yes. And there's a lot of people who just have a brokerage account, go onto an exchange, buy crypto, figure out how to store it. People are like, oh, I don't know about this. It feels difficult because they want to just use the traditional channel. So now what you've done is if you think about the two age cohorts, so the young people, they don't yes. have all the money. The Very old good. people have all the money. Yes. And you're giving them an opportunity to invest in something that offsets all of the debasement of currency by central banks. It has high expected returns, much higher than anything else. And so for them, suddenly, they can just call their usual broker or their financial advisor, and they can put Bitcoin into their portfolio. So that's a very big deal because just the baby boom population in the United States has all of the wealth and it's 76 million people. So a lot of wealth will come into this space. So for them, it finally gives them access to this product in a way that they understand. For us, who've been here for a while, it's like we've been VC investors. You know, if you were in the 2011-12, you're like seed investors. And then, you know, 2013, you're probably Series A. 
then Series B, then Series C. So, and now it's kind of like our IPO. You know, it's actually, yes. it's a big deal. What really matters for the space more than uh, number go up, money coming in, is we've now created a bridge between the mm -hmm. TradFi world and the crypto world. And over time, more capital will come into this new space because we know that everybody wants to build on it. The financial system does, the big brands do, everybody does. So the capital will come in to finance an acceleration of this space. And so, yes, because crypto is unique, we get to own the underlying networks. So you own your ETH or your Bitcoin or whatever it is, and it goes up. But it also means that it accelerates everything because more money is available in the ecosystem. So the dreams that we all have of getting to decentralize money and the internet of value and all of this are going to accelerate. My view on this coming cycle, it's more of an everything, everywhere, all at once cycle because I think a lot of the key technologies have been built. Right. And now it's the application. So about 65 billion went into venture capital in the last cycle. All right. That should come through to applications and projects in this cycle. So I think we're all going to be a little bit shocked by some of the mm -hmm. things that happen, much like we're all a bit shocked by AI right now because there's a new innovation every day. That's exactly. what I think we're about to walk into. So, yes, it didn't play out as I imagined. It seems that the financial system is going to be the last to use it when it was the most obvious for them. Right. They just were kicking and screaming because the regulators were so scared Meanwhile, a bunch of technologists and a bunch of nerds took it and turned it into, at peak, a $3 trillion asset. It's amazing. I mean, amazing. really, as, as a friend of mine, Meltem Demira, says, is we memed a trillion dollar asset into existence, which was Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. By the power of the community, the power of conviction, Yes. Um, and the power of people having fun and enjoying it created a trillion dollar asset. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. it's Most of us who've been around the space for a while have had to learn how to deal with volatility of an early stage technology asset. Right? It's not easy. And everybody makes mistakes trying to teach people how to stay the game to generate the returns. I'm not sure that regular investors would have been ready without all of the hard work done by the community. Now, maybe 2020, it could have happened then. But before then, I think it wasn't really able to. But it has cost the United States a loss of advantage. Okay. A lot of this came out of the US. Mm. A lot of the great companies were built from the US. And then the yeah. US, having the world's reserve currency, and the entire euro dollar banking system and everything else went like, no, 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 we don't want this. It would have slowed down the capital into the space and maybe we would have been further advanced. But I'm not sure that retail investors would have truly understood it at that point, And we might have done ourselves more damage than good. I mean, there's still, you know, a bunch of these baby boomers are still going to have to go through a crypto down cycle and they're going to have to learn the hard way. But this takes some yes. guts. Firstly educate yourself i know it seems like i don't want to do that i just want to make money <clears throat> yes you will massively increase your probability of making money if you understand what you're doing understand how to trade if your time horizon is trading or how to invest what to invest in is the other really important thing so i think that is it, it, it can't be more important you have to be patient but this space moves fast enough you don't need leverage in a space that, you know, Solana last year was up 10x, right? So yes. people just need to focus on learning what this space is about, what the real opportunities and how the actual people make money. Because if they were to actually find the truth and say, well, who's made the most money out of crypto? Almost all of those people have been long term buy and hold investors. Yes. I don't know many people who've made money from trading. Even if they do, it may be 10% or 20% of their book and the rest is buy and hold. As an investment, it's good because the ETF is an investment vehicle. Yep. It is not a technology vehicle. So yep. we still haven't won that battle. We've won the battle to say this is an investable asset class 
And it's a very exciting one because as a technology, it's growing fast and the adoption of it's growing fast. But what we haven't got is the acceptance that the technology should be integrated in everything we do. So that Very battle is still to come, which is why people keep asking the question, well, where are the applications? And half yes. of them they don't see, like stable coins, very important application. Most people just don't really understand. They're expecting yes. some Apple moment, and, and it's not. It's just the gradual integration of this in everything we do. The actual value, a measuring value here, is mm -hmm. actually Metcalfe's law. So Metcalfe's law was developed around the phone idea about okay. you know what is the value of a phone network if you've got one user you can't call mm. anybody you got two mm. don't really help you got eight billion it's one of the most valuable commodities in the world right okay so metcalf's law is the value of a network and what it says is the number of users of the network basically the value of the network is the number of users of the network really multiplied by the number of applications. I know that there's a slightly different definition because it's it's number of users squared, but really what it's saying is a lot of people on the network and a lot of people using the network. That you can actually value by formula. This is how Amazon works. This is how right. Apple works. This is how right. Google works. And so that's how you value a lot of these technologies that have underlying networks. That's why Reliance is so valuable because it has both an energy network mm -hmm. and the mobile phone network and the data network that's built on top yes. of it. Yes. Right. So that's why blockchain technology itself, you can value. Now, people will have different ways of assessing Metcalfe's law, but it's doable. But Bitcoin as a savings asset, okay, that's really memetics. It's stories we humans tell ourselves. And because... 500 million DGENs say it has value, it now has value. We've memed it into existence. So this was Raul Pal with his insights highlighting the evolving landscape of cryptocurrency investments, the role of ETFs, and the potential impact on the broader financial system. Feel free to share your thoughts and engage in the discussion in the comments section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on the latest developments in the crypto space. Thanks for watching.